I'm going to be doing an unboxing today of this Evolution multi-purpose saw. I bought it at Menards today. Price point was $223. I think there was a rebate on it, so I'll get that back later. Uh, it is a Evolution 14-inch carbide tip chop saw. Uh, the box says that it is accurate, reliable, powerful, and can cut multi-materials, including uh, steel, aluminum, wood, with embedded nails, as if that really ever happens, uh, plastic, and more. So I've been using my Hitachi abrasive chop saw for all my steel fabricating work for almost two years now. And it, it works just fine. I got my Hitachi um, right over there. And it works just fine. Um, if you have an abrasive saw, you know that uh, it can be a bit messy. It can be, I mean, it's obviously loud. Um, but what I eventually ended up discovering uh, through some videos is that Evolution makes a type of a, um, a metal saw that is called a cold cut. And so uh, I started looking into it a little bit more and more, and I saw a lot of comparative videos online uh, comparing the Evo Saw 360, or I think it's called the Evo Saw 380, with uh, a bunch of other different kinds of saws, uh, mostly abrasive saws. Uh, and then uh, in the time comparison, I saw that the Evo Saw, or the Evolution saws, were doing a bulk of the work in a half, a fraction of the time, two seconds compared to 13 seconds with an abrasive saw. I had some guys in my shop a couple of weeks ago, and uh, as five people were working inside of the shop all at the same time, each working on their own little individual project, I noticed that a line was forming at the abrasive saw. And uh, that's, that's eventually what got me looking into a, a quicker solution to cutting the steel. Mostly uh, angle iron, um, tube, uh, square tube, some medium gauge steel. And at Menards I discovered that they had a, a type of evolution saw that says it's a multi-material cutting saw, 14 inch blade, carbide blade. And uh, I went to Evolution's website and was disappointed to learn that uh, they didn't have this particular saw, at least not this saw that had this look on their website. And the guy at Menards convinced me that th there might be a partnership between Evolution and Menards and they make specifically this version for uh, the Menards manufacturer. Uh, there are other versions of the Evolution saw that's a multi-purpose saw and it has a lot of the same literature on it. It has a slightly different look. So I'm going to be doing an unboxing of this Evolution saw today. Um, and I'll do a setup for it later and we'll do some cutting on it too. mechanism. Here's the blade locking button. Here's the blade guard. It's a full one piece. Here's the carbine tip blade. It has these little tiny notches cut out into these little ridges. It's definitely transportable. A little bulky, uh, but transportable. So if I were to lock it down, pick it up. I'd say that's every bit of a good 50 pounds, which is what you want. I mean, you want it to be somewhat heavy. Um, there's a locking mechanism here on the, uh, on the trigger, so no accidents here. Here's your vise on your bench bench. This bench seems a little thin, which I, I noticed in a lot of the reviews for the other saws from Evolution. Uh, I, I can't find this one on their website. In fact, I actually scanned the QR code on the box and it came up empty, um, as if they don't even have a product page on it. 
which really uh, made me concerned. Uh, but I figured uh, the price point on this one was 230. I think the Evo saw 380 was 380 bucks. Uh, so we're talking about 150 bucks less. If it still does the same uh, quality of work for me, um, for me it's worth saving 150 bucks. Um, comes with an Allen wrench down here. I assume that's probably for taking the on this side of the saw. There's a housing here and here. This Allen wrench takes these off. And it's the same wrench, I believe, to actually take the blade off. Now the blade I saw also at Menards, and it's also available on Amazon. Uh, the blade is a, a Rage 355 TCT. And now that I think about it, that's the model, that's the name of the model, Rage 1, Rage 2. I think they even have a Rage 3 and Rage 4. I think those are actually smaller, more uh, um, circular saw blades. But the Rage 2 is what this one I think most closely compares to. Uh, the Rage 2 being uh, also available on, on their manufacturer website and on um, Amazon. This blade is different than the blade on the Evo Saw 380 uh, in a couple of ways. It's, it's different in its design, and I don't know what the blade on the Evo Saw says, um, but this blade says that it's for uh, the Rage Evolutions Chop Saw, multi purpose tungsten carbide tip blade, ideal for cutting mild steel up to six millimeters or a quarter inch thick, aluminum, plastics, and wood. Um, also used for with the Rage Saw system. 1600 RPM, uh, 14 inch blade, 25.4 millimeter arbor, six millimeter quarter inch thickness steel, and that includes wood with nails. It has a specific directional for uh, blade rotation. At first glance, I like its weight. I like I like the saw guard. Um, this part seems here heavier uh, in thickness and sturdier than this part here. This part's got a uh, the guard here has a little bit of a wobble on it. I suspect that's because it's intended to um, you know go through the opening and closing. Uh, it has a little bit of a, a, a rubberized stopper here on the inside. So as that comes to a stop and click shut, you know, a, a, after a hundred times, you probably don't have to worry too much about things getting nicked up because there's a rubber stopper on the inside. Uh, looks like a pretty nice high tension spring here. Saw locking mechanism down there. Um, a little card about your fence positioning. It goes up to 45 degrees, same Allen wrench, works here on the back side of the fence um, to dial in to 45 degrees. I do have a chop saw uh, that has a quick release here on the vise, but this one doesn't have that, which I'm okay with. Um, but the deck does seem a little bit, a little bit thin uh, for me, and I know that the Evo saw has uh, some sort of a chip tray down here that you can pull out and discard all of those chips that will come off when you're cutting through metal. Uh, this Evo saw from Menards does not have that tray. It does come with a, uh, a little uh, fitting here that apparently can be set uh, inside of this vise uh, to allow you to hold uh, round stock, even square bar in here, um, and allow you to get um, more sides to uh, clamp down onto it, which uh, this comes off. I guess I'll plug it in and give it a shot. So one of the comments that I heard about the Rage 2 saw, which is also a 14 inch uh, saw with this exact same blade, just different housing. As far as I can tell, that's the only difference. Uh, the Rage 2 has uh, a type of a, a collapsing guard here that 
uh, comes in from both the top and the bottom of the saw and as you pull the saw down it it comes open both ways um, but one of the concerns that I read and I heard about the Rage 2 saw system was that it was a, a loud system. Uh, it doesn't bother me much when I'm in the shop here. Um, it's going to get loud and I have protective ear um, safety equipment for that. So, But I thought I'd go ahead and give it a spin here just so that you can kind of hear uh, how loud it gets. Now that'll sound different when we put some some steel in there. So let me go get a sheet of steel or a, a little bar of steel, and we'll try that out. All right, uh, I have here um, a piece of steel that measures in at about a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to go ahead and see if that's enough for me to be able to put inside of the vise to safely cut some off. here. Same piece of pipe. A little bit bigger. A little bit safer. What I'm mostly trying to attain here, um, and the reason why I buy the saw, is uh, I'm looking for a mostly burr-free, a quick solution um, to cutting my steel uh, so that I can get back to actually working with it and welding it uh, and getting creative with it. Uh, so mostly uh, the straight cut because the abrasive saw doesn't uh, oftentimes give that to me. Uh, there's a, an extra step afterwards of cleaning it up and um, I'm hoping that this is a, a time saver uh, but also doubles as a multifunction saw. I can throw some lumber in here and I can, you know, whatever, maybe even some plastic. I don't, I don't oftentimes work with plastic but maybe even get that in here too. So um, let me go ahead and get it going. All right, so the heater just kicked on, so we're going to compete with that noise, but um, here we go. See what we have. I'm not used to these little shavings. I'll show you these shavings here in a little bit. There's the piece that cut off. There's the cut off piece. Looks like I got one big, decent burr at the end. Um, but that'll knock off pretty easily. I might even be able to fold that back and forth a couple of times and take that off. Yeah, it does. All right, so here's a here's the cut on this piece. This is the piece that came off. I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty clean. This is the part that cut. This is the raw side. Check out what's in the vise. I'm very happy with that. That was quick and it's pretty clean. Um, another interesting detail is that it's a cold cut. So you're not reaching down and grabbing a hot piece of steel when you're all said and done. Leaves a neat little color in there, kind of like a hologram. Um, which is kind of what is left over. All these little tiny shavings that I'm not used to with the abrasive saw. These have a neat uh, color to them. I heard somebody call it man glitter. It's kind of funny. So, so now this is what I have left over. This is my byproduct. Um, which, you know, will we'll go up into the vacuum. It's definitely more 
uh, granular, uh, thicker pieces than when I use the abrasive saw. The abrasive saw, um, one thing that I was concerned about the abrasive saw was the byproduct is a dust. Uh, both from the blade itself and from the steel. It seems to obliterate it in such a way so that it actually turns into an airborne particle. And uh, I'm oftentimes using the chop saw, the abrasive one, uh, with some sort of a respirator. Uh, this, and, and although it's still good to have a respirator in the shop, uh, I don't see as much concern with, with uh, particles that are this large. Uh, if they come through the air, they're going to come right back down. In fact, when I was chopping just a second ago, one piece did come off, kind of get me in the forearm a little bit. And it's, I think, hot coming right off of the blade, but um, it wasn't enough to, to hurt. So I'm working on a lamp, um, and it's going to be a tall lamp. And in order to get some height in there, I thought I would creatively um, weld uh, these six small pipes together and one problem that I was having with the abrasive saw is when I was cutting it on the abrasive saw it requires so much tension for over such a long period of time that the piece was um, shifting ever so slightly inside of the vise and every single time I took a cut off piece here Gatling gun like uh, it was not giving me a straight edge so uh, I'm going to eventually build off the top of this as it stacks and creates the height on my lamp. Um, this needs to be flat. This needs to be nearly as, as flat as I can get it, almost perfectly flat. So now I've, I've buckled it down into the vise. Um, I'm gonna take my speed square. If the, if the fence and the deck here is true, then I should be pretty straight here. Um, and not so much here. Let me see if I can. One thing that I I know I'm not going to like about this fence and this deck here is that it seems a little seems a little thin. What do we have here on the fence? This is three sixteenths, maybe just a hair over a ten gauge. Um, definitely not three sixteenths yet. Um, so just a hair over ten gauge. And as I crank down the vise, I can see a little bit of, of action back here on the back side. Let me go ahead and get a couple of other things to see if I can get this in there perfect. Okay, I was able to get a washer and a couple of small cutout pieces back in here because uh, the flange uh, is wider in its diameter than these six pieces of steel pipe actually make up in, in its circumference. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a rip. It's in there pretty good. The fence is, I don't know, that's, that's the part that I'm mostly concerned about. And if people are critical of, of this, I think it'll be because of this part of the machine down here. And I'm happy with the cut uh, so far. Let's see how this one, let's see how this one goes. So I noticed that while I was cutting, and as my concern was mostly not that this was going to be um, a perfect uh, here, uh, mostly my concern is up against that fence. And due to the vibration of the machine, 
and perhaps it's, it's that I didn't clamp it in right. I don't think I got a perfect cut on that. I think I got pretty close though, closer than I was getting with the abrasive saw. But I noticed as I got closer to the bottom of the cut, it started to it started to turn a little bit inside of the inside of the clamp. So if I give myself a nice smooth surface here on my table, uh, let me go get a level. As long as this is flat up here. It's okay. That's 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 workable. And it seems like most of my angle is I'm a, a little bit high on this side, so I can't remember what position I had it in, but uh, it looks like I'm off by less than oh. Uh, less than an eighth of an inch. Maybe I might try and put it back in. Um, but I think I can actually work with this. I can take that over to the bench grinder and, and, and level some of that out. If I didn't have six pipes to cut through, it probably wouldn't require any cleaning at all. But um, I don't think there's any burrs on there. There's a tiny one there and this, yeah, this I can tell was the bottom of the cut. I can tell right here that that was the bottom of the cut. And it looks like it just started to turn just barely. So here's ultimately my concern. If, if a straight cut is what you're going for, which oftentimes that's kind of what you're going for, and you don't want to spend too much time sitting at the bench, kind of grinding it away, and checking it for uh, 90 degree angles or whatever. Um, the back fence here might be the difference between this saw and the Evo 380. Um, I don't have that saw. I don't know what the bench or the fence is like that on that saw. I do know that the blade is different. It, it, it looks, it has a different look to it. It looks typically, it looks more like a typical um, uh, saw, like a miter saw blade. Uh, does and it's and it's blue so that's noticeably different but uh when I go to clamp down on this you can see a little bit of give right there see I'm turning the clamp right there and you can see that right in here I'm losing now I'm gonna loosen it up so you can see see it come back and I don't know what's what's straight. Um, I loosen it up. Let's give it a cut. Glasses. cold cut. I like that there are no burrs inside of that piece there. This is the piece that came off. Take this out of the clamp here. Let's see what we got. Now that's a nice, nice clean cut. Let me use the level here to see. just not level. It's level one direction, but not on the other axis.
Let me double check and cut this side off because if that's not level there, it could be thrown off my, my level. level than before. Oh yeah, that's level on that side. That's, that's serviceable. It's not perfect on this side. Um, so that worked. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than the abrasive saw. That's my review of the Evolution 14 inch multi-purpose chop saw um, I've used it today just for cutting steel I mean I assume if it cuts the steel in this way it probably does a pretty decent job for wood and plastic or uh, whatever other aluminum materials that it says that it can cut through on the box um, I already have a miter saw for my for cutting wood so I didn't cut wood with it today um, I was really happy with a couple of details uh, I bought the saw because I wanted to make for quicker work and I wanted to make for cleaner work and this saw does that it gives me the quicker cleaner option compared to the abrasive saw that I was using before uh, one one detail and there's only one detail that I don't like about it um, that is the flexing on the fence and the back of the vise uh, I think I might be able to find a way to work around that uh, I'll probably end up just getting some some heavier gauge steel and mocking up a fence just like they have designed on the evolution saw um, with notches drilled into it in the, in the exact same way just just heavier steel uh, so that I can get a more durable uh, clamp into that vise uh, and so that there's no bending on the end and I'm sure to have my cuts uh, perfectly straight cuts which is what I'm going for when I'm welding my sculptures together uh, the price point on it uh, was $230 right now and through uh, January the 11th, I think they have a rebate, 11% off. Um, but another detail that I did notice that the one sold at Menards uh, seems to only be sold at Menards. Uh, I didn't find this Evolution saw on Amazon um, uh, and I didn't find any information on their website about it, but I do compare all of the information uh, from this Evolution saw to what they call the Rage 2 